Hey everybody, uh, today we are talking about student loan forgiveness. Um, it's been a hot national topic for many reasons, um, but we are talking today about student loan forgiveness programs and uh, Suzanne approached me as somebody who, um, who learned a lot about this herself and thought, gosh, I wish someone had been able to tell me all of these things when I needed to know. And so she very graciously um, agreed to share what she's learned with our group. So I'm going to turn it over to Suzanne and Katie is also joining us from Financial Aid. So take it away, Suzanne. Yay, so we can tag team. I really was hoping this would be a casual conversation and I have some talking points and some really important um, strategies that uh, mm -hmm. you need to know about in order for the to succeed in uh, getting loan forgiveness. And I wonder if we want to start just briefly i don't know if um amanda or rebecca or if we want to just do because i know we i actually don't think i know amanda um forgive me if we've met and i i'm forgetting but i know rebecca and do you all want to introduce yourselves or how long how about how long you've been at psu yeah um so i'm a social work major amanda um she her pronouns and um i'm a senior so ah yeah graduating and have a, do you have a, some student loans? Yeah, because I'm a first year, like first generation student. So my family wasn't really educated in all the loan stuff. So. Gotcha. Had, I was very similar. And do you, just really quick, do you know what your next step is? Uh, social work is likely a field that would qualify for loan forgiveness through public service. Um, yeah, uh, I haven't really looked into it, so I'm interested in it. And I know I'm looking into master my master's degree too in a year or two, so uh-huh super and and rebecca do you want to share how long you've been here sure thanks um so i'm a faculty member for the english department and i've been at psu for 12 years um and i took a i was also a first generation student and i took a i was non-traditional so i took the long long road um, to get my education and I amassed lots and lots of student debt, unfortunately. You know, um, you may, that's, um, you may be pleasantly surprised. You may actually qualify and have it be done because it's 10 years. If you've worked at PSU for 12 years, you might like apply and then boom. Um, but we can talk about that. And then Khan. Hi, Khan. And then Hannah too, because I know Hannah's actually like oh. participating. So, <laughs> and I think Not just working. Hi. Um, just, um, here, just introduce yourself. Introduce yourself. How long you've been at PCU, maybe? Um, Khan Lai in the social work program. This is my third year at PSU and my first full-time, you know, academia job. I was like a TL during my grad program for about five semesters. So yeah, lots of student loan as well. Yeah. Um, Katie or... Hannah? I can go uh, next. So um, I'm Hannah. I'm, um, what was my position? I'm a learning advisor at the Open Learning and Teaching Collaborative. I've professionally been at PSU. I think this is my third year, uh, but it's all blending together a little bit. Um, and then um, I was a student here. Um, I started in 2013. Um, and I'm definitely, I definitely have student loan debt. Um, me and my fiance both, but we both work for the universe, uh, university system. And this is definitely an interesting topic to me. So. Oh, super. I hope it's helpful. And then Katie. Hi, I'm Katie Rafferty. I am the financial aid manager over in the student financial services office. Um, I've been with Plymouth for a little over a year, but I've been doing financial aid for about nine. So I was previously at, an, at another uh, USNH institution before Super. coming here. So, and then we also have the lovely Robin over here on this side of me. And I have been here uh, 20 years and um, I, Phil and I both have paid off our student loans. God help us since he's retiring, one would hope. You would get them paid off by retirement, friends. That's the goal. I know um, it's true, but it, uh, especially his loans, you know, um, were not easy. They took us a really long time. But, but anyway, I'm glad I advised so many students. So I'm looking forward to learning here. Super. 
And we have Casey joining us. Hi, Casey. Hi, friend. Can you just introduce yourself and how, maybe how long you've been at PSU? Casey. Hey, everyone. Sorry. I couldn't hear you. Zoom was just catching up. Sorry, I'm late. No worries. Um, how long have you been at PSU? Me. Yes. Five years. I think I'm on my fifth year. Okay. Super. So what I want to do is just go through my talking points and uh, share information on each of my talking points. There's not very many, maybe nine, there's nine of them. And at any time you have questions or wanna go deeper into something, uh, just go ahead and in interrupt and let me know. But the first thing I want you to know is that if you work at PSU full-time, um, PSU is a qualifying institution, it's a 501c3. And, um, and even private schools and private universities are also um, 501c3s. I did my postdoctoral work at Stanford and I did loan forgiveness when I was there as well, even though they're a private institution. So a lot of times people don't realize that. Um, you need to work full time, which the public service loan forgiveness is defining as 30 or more, 30 or more hours a week. So if you're working 30 or more hours a week, you're considered a full time employee of PSU you likely qualify for public service loan forgiveness. In order to do that, and at, at the end, I'm going to share the form because I called them this morning because um, there's a new program in place due to COVID that is, so right now I'm in the loan forgiveness program and there's a freeze on my interest being accumulating. So I'm not making payments and my interest is not accumulating and these payments I'm not making are counting toward my student loan forgiveness. And so it's in my best interest to really know a lot about this because if, you, if your goal is to pay off your whole student loan, then you're gonna be paying off your loan in a certain way. If your goal is to qualify and get loan forgiveness, you're gonna wanna spend as, less, as little money as possible. Um, Barbara just got here, distracted. Um, so the next, so that's the first talking point. If you work at PSU full-time, you qualify for this program. You need to make 120 qualifying payments. And what that means is you, like, for example, you can't just hurry up and make 120 payments like in 120 days or whatever. It's one payment a month. Um, so if you, you know, paid off your, your monthly payment and then you wanted to like add money to like, you know, go toward the interest, um, that wouldn't count for qualifying payment. And again, strategy, because for me, um, if 100, I, I have about 100, I have over $100,000 in student loans, so much that my payments aren't actually, my, my payments aren't covering the interest. So every month my student loans go up, not down. Um, and which, and you know, and the irony is that I'm off, I've also got two kids in college. So I'm paying for their college tuition at the same time as I'm paying off my student loans. Um, so 120 qualifying payments, that's 10 years of payments. You can defer if you have a financial hardship, you don't, that doesn't disrupt your program, the program, then you would just reapply and then the qualifying payments kick in again. The next uh, talking point I have is that um, it can be retroactive. As long as you've worked at PSU or another qualifying institution, it goes back in time. That's why I was like so excited to hear about Rebecca because um, Rebecca may qualify. There is a really important caveat though. It only works after you consolidate. So say you're in the public service loan forgiveness program and you've qualified and you're working at a qualifying institution, then you get, then you, someone approaches you or some, um, you decide that you want to consolidate your student loans. You're starting from square one all the way to zero. So it's really important to know that when you start the public service loan forgiveness program and you qualify, that you don't ever consolidate ever again. <laughs> so consolidate first before you apply if that's what you want to do. Um, and so I, I am curious with Rebecca if uh, 
if you've consolidated recently or if you've just been paying off your school loan um, without. The only having... thing I would suggest is since we are posting or recording, maybe yeah. we don't, yeah, like maybe we um, end and then we can talk more gotcha. personally. Yeah, there sounds you go. good. Okay. Um, so I'm going to just keep going on and then. All right, so if you, some of you have worked at other institutions, even part of the, United, the University of New Hampshire system, which would also be considered a qualifying institution, and you need to submit forms separately because you need to verify your employment. So um, for example, say you worked at UNH and then you transferred to PSU, um, you can go back in time during those years that you worked at UNH, you just need to work with their human resources people to get your um, your student loan, your employment verified. Um, and you need to apply every year. And this is where a lot of times this program seems really exhausting and daunting. And it sort of is uh, because you do need to be on your game and really um, checking your qualifying payments and making sure that you do submit your um, form every single year. In fact, I went in preparation for today's talk, I realized I hadn't done it yet this year. So I literally went, filled out the form, went to human resources, they verified it and I, um, I submitted it today for, because I noticed that I got about 10 um, or even maybe 12 um, payments that are, it says eligible, but not verified. So it's like keeping track, but um, not being counted. So um, I oftentimes call, I just call and talk to them. And, and I know that it, it sometimes isn't super fun to call the student loan people, but I've had some really nice, kind conversations. A lot of the folks that work there have student debt and they really resonate. Um, so I just have it in my calendar. My, my annual um, uh, month is February. So when February comes around, I know that I need to resubmit my forms to make sure that you're on track. Two you more. see that question in the chat, Suzanne? No, um, I didn't. Is it true that if you miss even one qualifying payment, you're set back to square one, or is that a rumor? That's not true. That's not true. Um, that might be uh, for other programs, like um, I'm trying to think, I know that there was something that that was relevant to, but I called, that's why I think that busting myths is important when it comes to this program because that could totally deter uh, someone from applying or um, and that and others. So that is definitely not the case. Um, so the last few points I have are, okay, so now this is all my opinion, um, but like I said, if you qualify and you, you, so I called the, the loan forgiveness people today because another myth that's out there is that only like less than a hundred people have actually gotten the loan forgiveness and that's also not true. Um, and um, so I called, so, and then also the other one is it doesn't pay off your full amount. So if you qualify and you make your 120 payments and you're really on top of it and you get to that 10 year mark or you get to the 120 payment mark and it, it, it comes time for you to submit, you, you submit for the loan forgiveness program. And this step I'm not super sure about, um, and it wipes out 100% and all the interest of your student loans, 100%. And I called them this morning. I said, how likely is this, you know, is this working for people? Because the people that are reaching their 10 year market, it was about, you know, I think 10, 10 to 12 years ago would be the people that are qualifying now. So they're learning a lot. Um, and that is, uh, so it's lo income driven loan or payment. If you're getting your student loans wiped out at the end of 120 qualifying payments, you wanna make the lowest payment possible. Um, and so this is sort of a pivot in thinking, if you're paying off your student loan completely, you wanna make the largest payment possible. If you're paying, if you're doing loan forgiveness, you wanna make the lowest payment possible which means that you also wanna qualify for income-driven loan repayment, which is going to lower your, your, your uh, payments based on income. Um, it doesn't really take into consideration other things like, so for example, it wouldn't take into consideration that I'm paying tuition for a child. 
uh, but it does look at your income. It doesn't look at like, like when I lived in California, my rent for my little bungalow was $3,500 a month and they didn't consider that. <laughs> so my payments, my payments when I lived in California were like $1,000 a month and I had to pay that. Um, not so high here at PSU. Uh, and so um, then the last, so right, if you, if you're considering this, if this program and you're gonna like really commit to it, then I would recommend considering income-driven loan repayment as well. Um, does, a, said, does applying for income-based repayment work the same as consolidation? Like, do you, do you have to restart? Like, how does- That one does- a Question in the chat, yeah. Hmm. Um, does applying for income-based repayment work the same way as consolidation? No. I think you're asking Casey, like, um, does it, like, do you want to consolidate before? Yeah. Like you said, you want to yeah. consolidate before, cause everything after that is what counts. If say like you qualify, but then you do income based, does that sort of restart it? Um, no, mm -mm. Oh, cool. no. And, and not that I know of. So every year I'm also, they actually require me to reapply for the income driven loan repayment. So they're making Cause your income might change. Right. So yeah. it's going to go up as my income goes up. And as long as I'm in that program, they're making me reapply, whereas they're not making me apply for the loan forgiveness. Um, and so it doesn't affect loan forgiveness. It doesn't make you go back to zero to, to apply for the income-driven loan repayment. The last um, talking point I have is, right, not to consolidate. It's really, really, really important not to consolidate. That happened to me. I was in the student loan forgiveness program when I was in California and then I consolidated and I and and you know then I was calling to check on my um how many qualifying repayments I had and they told me that because I had consolidated I went back to zero and nobody told me that. And so, you know, like I I was convinced that it, they were trying to trick me. <laughs> um and I had a really long conversation with a really kind person about these myths and the student loan folks intentionally trying to trick us. Um, and I guess I don't really know how I feel about it because um, this is a super effective way for somebody to be making a lot of money, um, you know? And so it is not in someone's best interest to have student loans wiped out for people. Um, and so for, in that case, I, I sort of, I do think that it could be that they're making it really hard on purpose, but this woman that I was talking with just really was very convincing that they're not trying to trick us. Um, let's see, I have that you're going to need PSU's federal employment ID number. I'm going to put it in the chat and I just wanted to make it really easy for you to do this. And, and you're talking about, because obviously we have some students on the call who are going to be doing this later. So the, the PSU number is for those who are going to claim your job at PSU is what exactly. is qualifying you. Yeah. And how you find your, your federal employer identification number is by calling human resources. So for Amanda, wherever you go, um, you're going to want to call them. And then when you do enter grad school, I would recommend that because as, if, as a student, you get... Um, your loans frozen and interest doesn't accumulate as a student. So I would recommend that you don't pay off your school loans if you're gonna do the loan forgiveness program um, while you're a student, unless the only reason to do that would be to um, pay off your loans quicker. That, you know, and the other thing is to call and talk to someone at the Fed loan place to make sure that you're right on track and just to get your questions answered. Um, and then I have the form as well here because I was gonna see if folks wanted to go. It's very easy. It took me, uh, took me maybe 10 minutes to fill it out and then drive it over to the little white house. Um, Nicole signed, let, like, let me wait and signed it. She verifies the date that you started your employment and then you um, scan it and upload it into your student loan um, portal. So those are the main, and I'm not sure if Katie has anything to add or any, you can also, like if I said anything wrong, because yeah. <laughs> this is really just my experience. 
I just wanted to clarify, you had said something about um, how people were saying that it only paid a certain dollar amount versus the whole thing off. That's a certain, that's a different type of loan forgiveness program, but that that's the teacher loan forgiveness. It's, it's a little bit different from the, um, the public service loan forgiveness. There's also a teacher loan forgiveness that people who are going into teaching may qualify for. So my advice definitely is um, if you want to check out the programs, the qualifications and all of that, go to the website studentaid.gov and under manage loans in the top uh, part, there's a pull down menu and it has public loan, public service loan forgiveness and teacher loan forgiveness. And it goes over the qualifying points and Q&A and all of that. And you can link to the application there. Um, it, if you're in the teacher, looking to go into the teacher loan forgiveness, it tells what the qualifying points are as well as it gives a list of schools that um, it may qualify. So if you're teaching at a certain school, there is a list out there that you can maybe look up your school and see. Um, I'm not sure if it's an exact complete list. It may not be, but it's certainly something that you could, if you're in a, at um, a secondary or if you're at um, an elementary school, you can certainly inquire with your school as well. Do you know if you guys, qualify for teachers? Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh. I, we were gonna ask if universities qualify for somebody like say Suzanne or Khan on the call or Rebecca who are faculty here, Elizabeth, um, could they qualify for the teacher one? And if so, which do you have a sense of which one they should pick or should they just go evaluate on that? Well, own? so the teacher loan forgiveness, it only does a certain dollar amount. It's only up to 17,500. Um, though on the website, because I'm on it right now, it says, you know, one of the questions is, can I receive loan forgiveness under both the teacher loan forgiveness program and the public service loan forgiveness program? So there is a question, there is an answer for that. And it goes over and says, yes, you can potentially receive forgiveness under both programs, um, but not for the same period of teaching service. So they can't overlap. So yes, you could be involved in both programs, but you can't basically double dip um, in them. So if say you did the, if someone qualified for the teacher loan forgiveness and um, they need to be have five years of um, full time teaching as a quali as a highly qualified full time elementary or secondary education teacher for that piece of it, um, then they may be able to use that and then may be able to go on to the public service loan forgiveness if they work at a place that um, also qualifies under that program. Uh well, since we're being recorded, I wonder if um, I'm, I'm going to show how to navigate to where the form is for people that aren't that, that may be watching this later. Sure. That's all right. So I'm going to share my screen. So the first step that you want to do is you want to go to the the Fed loan, myfedloan.org. And if you are, you know, if you have student loans, you're probably familiar with this. And it and don't sign in, you just go to resources over here under resources and you click on that and scroll all the way down to um, applications and forms. And then it says view applications and forms. Uh, it's giving me a funny open window. So when I get to the applications and forms, I'm going to now go to forgiveness and discharge forms and click on that. And then I'm going to click on public service loan forgiveness and the temporary expanded, which if you, you know, um, I'm not super savvy on the difference, but I know that I am in both. I'm in the public service loan forgiveness and temporary expanded uh, public service loan forgiveness. That's why there's my qualifying payments are accumulating while I'm not paying because of COVID. And then he, like Katie was saying, here's some information on the teacher loan forgiveness, but I'm going to click on this and then you can download it and fill it in. And you can see that the um, form is pretty 
easy to fill mm -hmm. out, but you will here you have the employer's name and the employer ID number. And that's where you're going to need that um, federal employee or identification number. And then you'll click, um, you will pick that you work for a university right here in question nine. And then you skip to section four. And this is where you have to have someone from HR verify your employment. And so I'll up here, you have the date you started. Oops. Uh, the, it has the date you started and how many hours a week you work. That needs to be verified. So then the folks do go in and they look at your, um, your file and they confirm because I think I had it like I was a month off when I first did it and she had me correct it uh, and that's it. Then you submit it into your um, student loan profile page. I don't know if that would be helpful for folks to see or when you log in like to review your payments you'll see on the left hand side it will say I think it's on the left hand side um, public service loan forgiveness. And if um, you would like, I can show people how to navigate to the student aid duck of website, where to go on it and what to do when they're there. That way, in case they want to look at the information, it's just like to be able to share my screen. I don't know if I'm able to. I don't know if you have you to. You are, me. you just will have to wait one second. <laughs> I don't know if you have to make me a co-host. That's there you it. Go. You're right, you should be all set. Katie, okay. also, do you know if PSU is listed as a school for the teacher loan forgiveness? It's actually um, elementary and secondary schools. It's uh, not like colleges post-secondary. That would be the public service loan forgiveness versus okay. the other ones are for different types of programs. So let me. All right. Hopefully you can see my screen. Yes. All right. So studentaid.gov will bring you right here. And then you want to go to manage loans and see underneath that list, it has qualify for loan forgiveness, public service loan forgiveness, and teacher loan forgiveness. If you, this is more of a general, um, the qualify for loan forgiveness is more of a generalized type um, that goes over loan forgiveness discharges and all sorts of things. But if you want to specifically look for public service loan forgiveness, if you click on that, it'll bring you to that page specific to that topic. And it goes over several different things. Um, you know, what's a qualifying employer? Um, there's other embedded links in here, like you're talking about the 501c3. Um, and those types of organizations. And it just goes over what's a qualifying payment and um, all those different things. So, and the help tool. And then if I go back to, to, go back to teacher loan forgiveness, that goes over the same types of things, you know, eligibility requirements with several embedded links in there. Um, and also, what's a highly qualified teacher, what types of programs that might be under. So that will answer a lot of those questions in there uh, for people. And um, like Suzanne said, if there are further questions, I would definitely recommend contacting um, Fed Loan Servicing to ask the, um, the questions about the program because they can definitely um, answer what, you know, what may be qualifying and all of that. In the um, teacher one, there's, um, there is a link in here somewhere that, that links to the list of the, the program, um, the schools. Where is it? Uh, in the range of, it's in here somewhere. I'm not, I don't remember off the top of my head. I probably scrolled past it to begin with. Um, but there is, there is a link of qualifying institutions um, that are schools in like high need areas and things like that. So it's, it's specific parameters. Um, that you must meet in order to um, qualify for the teacher loan forgiveness. And it does say in here, it goes over the dollar amounts. It says up to the 17,500 um, for that program um, specifically. 
Do you know if in that managed loans, does it also have a link to the, um, the income driven loan repayment? I don't believe so. That would be something that right. may have, you may, the person, a uh, student may be able to look that up on, we should be able to look up information on that on the um, studentaid.gov website, but might have to search for it specifically. I don't, I don't believe when I looked through this earlier, there is a link to that specifically. And when, um, if you guys want maybe to chat together after this, when I post this recording, I can put whatever links you want in the resource that has the recording. So mm -hmm. obviously these two, but if you've got a couple of others, I can just add them to the resource so people can find stuff easily. Maybe I'll send my, my talking points to you so that you have the, the employee identification number and. I, I might not post that. I don't know. Oh. It's on the. On the net. I, I mean, that's, like that. I, are they public? I don't know. I think so. I'm going to look yeah, right. So I could, I could put it. Um, I might stop recording and that way we can talk more personally if people have questions. Um, I think I have a that. question first um, that, oh, yeah, go ahead. that more people than me might be interested in talking or hearing about. Um, I know um, there was some conversation or um, like in Congress uh, as part of our, you know, previous um, presidential administration about getting rid of some sort of loan forgiveness program. Um, and I was just curious, uh, this might be a question beyond the scope of this um, session, but is there a sense of if that were to go away, the people who had previously applied for it, would they lose out on the loan forgiveness or would they be grandfathered in? A great question. I don't know. Um, so I guess you're not talking about people who have actually completed the program and had their loans forgiven. You're talking about people who are currently in the program right yeah, now. Yeah, like someone who's been doing it for seven years, they've been paying the minimum payments. So maybe their interest rate has been going up and, and, and you know that would actually be pretty detrimental if that were to be kind of pulled yeah. um, from underneath mm -hmm. them. I, I think that's a great question. I don't know the answer. Yeah. Uh, um, Katie, do you? I mean, it did last through Trump. So that seems like a certain seems kind positive. of litmus test. <laughs> In but, fact, you know. one of Biden's platforms, platform issues was this, is this. And he was talking about even doing away with student debt entirely. And yes. so I think that I'm, maybe I'm just an optimist, but I'm hoping that happens, sure. which is the exact opposite of sort of what you were saying, Hannah. Um, yeah, but this is, this is something that was on my mind when I was thinking about it, especially with like the thought of paying the minimum payment and not paying, like not yeah. dent, doing a dent in my interest. So it just keeps accruing um, right. and then having the rug pulled from underneath me. Yeah later on in life, but. Um, I wish I would have asked that of the um, the woman today that I called, but I, I may just call them back and, and see if I can get more clarity around that and then I can share it. Um, sure. But it's a great question, yeah. Um, and then just one other question about consolidation. Is there any benefit to consolidating before you go through this pro process? Because it seems like you don't need to consolidate if your loans are being forgiven. Well, the benefit of consolidating is a lower interest rate and mm -hmm. interest rates I read on the site this morning is they are set by Congress. So I'm not sure how this works, but that would be, so if you have multiple loans from multiple places, then you could consolidate them and then you just make one payment. Um, but uh, maybe Katie has more thoughts on that too. Um, I mean, if you have multiple lenders, and some people do, then that might be beneficial. But if you're under the same lender at a decent interest rate, I, I mean, it, it's really up to the person who, you know, they wouldn't necessarily have to consolidate. But like I said, there are several people who have multiple lenders, depending upon when they went to school, and if there's like a gap between, then they may not have the same lender when they come back to school. So that would be a benefit. And then uh, like Suzanne said, it would consolidate it based uh, under a different interest rate at that point. And this is probably totally obvious, but 
we're only talking about federal loans. We're not talking about like private loans, that sort of, yeah. yeah. Correct. But it includes loans, you know how sometimes you take loans out that, um, I can't, what are they called when you take a loan out and it doesn't accrue interest when you're a student versus it does accrue interest? Is, what's the Subsidized. word? Subsidized. Right. And so even you can get a federal loan that isn't subsidized and those, yes. count, those count in the loan forgiveness program. Right. There's two types of federal loans, subsidized and unsubsidized. They're both federal loans um, for federal student loans that you could um, potentially use towards this. Um, pay, like plus loans are not included in this part from what I was, when I was reading earlier, it mentioned plus loans not being included in this. It's just the undergraduate federal loans. And I did look it up and the employee ID number is public information. And I think Khan had uh, some potentially recordable questions. Yes, um, so I'll ask one at a time here. I just wanna clarify the differences between the website that Katie showed versus the website that Suzanne show to make sure, cause I'm taking notes and as I'm typing, I, you know, I can't listen thoroughly and type at the same time. So just wanna make sure. So uh, Katie's website is where you would go to obtain like information about the differences between the um, teacher uh, loan forgiveness versus the, um, other the public service one is that correct yes. and then Suzanne website is to go through the process where you like when you're ready to apply for one of these programs you would use Suzanne's website is that correct there are different applications for the teacher loan forgiveness this is just the what Suzanne was showing is just for the public loan forgiveness public for the service. teacher one there is a separate application and for that I don't know the difference between the two websites. <laughs> it confuses me too, because they seem to be one entity, but I know that when I log in, like the other thing that happens is um, make sure that you really remember your password. Mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, I have to work really hard to make a loan payment. Um, when I, before I was having it automatically withdrawn, I would go in every month and I would make the payment online. And I, for some reason I could, um, my password wasn't saved and I couldn't, remember it, that was another thing. I was like, I know this was my password. What is happening? And um, and so, you know, for one, my password's working and the other one is not, I don't understand. It's it's really confusing and um, important to like, I get, again, I can see how this would be a really daunting program to apply for because it does involve a lot of mental energy. So, so the studentaid.gov website, that is just the general um, Department of Ed website where you can get to several different things. Like you can do your FAFSA from that website. You can do entrance counseling, master promissory notes. You can look at information about the federal programs um, and there are links to it, just like um, the applications and things like that. So that's basically the general Department of Ed website where you can go from like, almost like a dashboard from what I was showing you to several different links on there that are information-based as well as being able to link to things that you can do. Like I said, like the FAFSA and, and those others. Um, what Suzanne was showing you at the Fed Loan Servicing is specific to that alone. Um, so hers is, is much more, narrow, just specific to the public service loan forgiveness. Um, Fed loan servicing is actually a federal loan servicer um, for the federal loans. So that's where that comes in. Whereas the website I showed you, like I said, is much more generalized with a lot of different information, different links on there. So makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, so next, I have two more questions. Next question about consolidation. I understand when Suzanne said, you know, you probably want to consolidate first before you apply for the program, because if you apply and you go through and put all these time and effort and credit into it per se, and you consolidate, then start over. So is there an option? Do people sometimes consolidate more than once? Um, or once you consolidate, then you're kind of 
pretty much stuck in that process. You can consolidate multiple times, but I, I, you actually said something that I think is really important. You made me think of something and that is that I would find out how many qualifying payments you would have that would be retroactive because remember this is retroactive and it may not be in your benefit. Like, so again, getting advice from a loan servicing specialist expert is really important here because say you actually have been working for the last five years in qualifying institutions, that 60 loan repayments that already automatically go into your 120. And so if you consolidate, then those would also go away. Mm -hmm. So um, again, I would call the loan folks and find out, just have them look at um, your student loans and say you've been working at PSU three years and you were a student before that, um, you would have 36 loan repayments. That's a significant amount. So if you consolidated now, those would go away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and I hope question. people are listening because I just want to, I mean, this is like, we're like giving out free money in the collab today, friends. And I just um, hope you will spread the word on this because if people don't understand how this works, they could really be missing out. Um, anyway, sorry. I just had to. This no, that's okay. It's so much money. Would have helped Phil yeah. a lot and both of us a lot a long time ago. And, well, and I, I send would this say information out to. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I send this information about this workshop out to the entire social work uh, uh, student body, uh, encouraging people to come because in the social work profession, they many of them do end up work in some type of field that do qualify for this. So I thought that was helpful. I think that's why Amanda's here. So good job, <laughs> Con. Um, go ahead, Katie, I think you had something. No, I was gonna say if there's other questions um, and you know, like you get to the studentaid.gov website and you're confused about things, you can certainly come and you know, come to the student financial services office. So you can um, you know, meet with somebody here and we can, we can go over this and kind of help maybe explain what some of the things mean because you know the language isn't always super clear to some yeah. people or, or help with that as well. Or so definitely use us as a resource um, if there's any questions about anything. And after we stop recording, I'm actually happy to show you what it looks like on my end so you can see what it looks like where you submit the form and everything mm -hmm. and what it looks like when it's counting your qualifying payments. Um, I think that would be helpful. I think a lot of this is just so intimidating. Um, so any kind of, yeah. and, and I just want to say that I'm happy to even like, like hang out together while you're applying just so that you could definitely do like, even if you wanted to do it on a Saturday morning or something, whatever is good for the people we could do a, you know, in three hours, like we do Hannah in the collab where we're like for students who are applying to IDS, just come and sit with us. We promise by the time you leave, we'll get you through the whole thing. Yeah. Um, does anybody have any other questions they want on the recording before I stop that? I do oh, have I one, one last one that I think would be relevant. Uh, Suzanne, with your experience, can you maybe just go through like some quick tips about, okay, this is what I recommend you do first before you even go through, you know, the application process, just like, for example, call and talk to someone and get all the information you need to figure out is your loan consolidated, and then you want to consolidate three apply for an income based driven loan payment plan, then go and apply, yeah. you know, so so what is your say, kind of basic think, steps, that seems like the steps. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so the thing I would first call. And actually, I can make sure that that phone number is in is given to Robin that you would call. And then the next thing would be to so you know you qualify because you you know that you're working for a qualifying institution. So that part's done. You don't have to find out if you're working for a qualifying institution because you are because you're at PSU. Um, and that's the other thing is I don't think people realize PSU is one. Um, then that, so I would call them and say how I work for you know. A university, a 501c3, I want to find out um, if you could just give me an idea of how many qualifying payments I've made since I started. And you want to find out, like, you might not remember if you've consolidated. Um, I've, I have consolidated multiple times um, for one reason or another, but most like mostly to reduce my interest rate. Um, and then 
So, you know, when I consolidated that one time I was telling you about, it was to reduce my interest rate and to make my payment to one entity. Um, but yet, and then it kicked me back to zero. And I think I, luckily I had only made like maybe 12 or so, you know, payments, but still. Um, and so then I would, so call them, the, the loan folks, and then I can't remember what order you said. So yeah, if you don't qualify it, or you, you, then you need to make a decision. Is it in your better interest to consolidate or not? Um, and a lot, a lot of it would depend on how much interest you're paying right now for your loans. Uh, my, I, I don't know, I'm not gonna make any recommendations. Um, and, then, and then submit the form. And remember, because it goes back retroactive to make sure that you have that, um, that date that you started and to think about the different places you've worked. Because if you've worked full-time in other institutions, they may also qualify. And then in which case you'd work with their human resources people. Does anybody have, or Katie, other thoughts about steps that I may have missed? Well, if you don't um, mind, if you have time, you might even just like pop those steps into a, you know, Suzanne suggested steps so that, you know, everybody knows these are not, you know, they're not dentist recommended or whatever, but these are just um, really, really great tips. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. Thanks for joining us.